Hey, wait a minute. One more thing. You got to hear that. Everything that I've done in spiritual eldering comes from what he showed me. So I just want to know that the credit is due where it belongs for both of you, yes, for that wonderful home and uh, where this lady said, will you do this for women too? Mm -hmm. Go tell that story. You all want me to tell stories. You tell a story. When we started working with elders, it was, there was no model for creating a community that was grounding, loving, meaningful, that had the people who felt like they were in a warehouse to feel like they were mentioned, that they were the elders of the people, that, that they deserve respect and honor, that they deserve to be joyful, that they, they had something to pass on, that they had a legacy, that their lives had meaning, that they had connection to one another that who they were and who they were becoming were all important. And so we, my friend Bob and me, and then later Debbie joined us, and we went on the floor of a nursing home and to begin to create a community that we called a regenerative community. And the whole idea was that we needed to restore for, to the culture the elders of the people. And this was in the, in the mid-70s, and we were looking ahead to the day when, when my hair would be as gray as it's starting to be and, uh, and we would be the elders and there's this whole generation of us that will be the elders of the people and how it will be that we'll form a community that will provide each other with a social safety net and how it will be that we'll have a mastery path as we grow from aging to saging there will be people among us who will grow into being the sages and the various arts and crafts of eldering and how there will be a taking of social responsibility for leaving a legacy behind and that that legacy would be the vehicle for social action. And so we had this big vision and, and you have to start somewhere. And so the somewhere we decided to start was on the floor of a nursing home. and. Um, and so we went in there and people didn't know what to make of us. They didn't know whether to take us seriously or not, and some of them did and some of them didn't. But one of the main transformative moments was we walked in one morning and we were told, Mr. Marcus died last night. And this was the first person who passed away since we came into the nursing home. And if central casting had sent us somebody to die, God rest his soul, it was Mr. Marcus, because he was such a sweet guy. And he sat at the first table in the dining room, and everybody walked in and touched his shoulder. And I often thought that if he was a brass statue, <laughs> you know, his shoulder would be shining. And so, so, you know, everybody we spoke to said, did you hear? Did you hear? Mr. Marcus died. And, you know, because, because the ritual was that there was no ritual. The ritual was in nursing homes that somebody would die, they would wheel them out the back door, and that, uh, that they'd take the name off the door and somebody else's name would go on the door and there would be no acknowledgement that somebody, that Mr. Marcus was here. Unless, of course, his family gave money and then there'd be a plaque that said, Mr. Marcus, you know, was here, you know. And I don't mean to say anything bad, but that's the way the system, the world worked. And so we came to the community of elders, which now is beginning to think of itself as the council of elders. And we said to them, the minute we started again, this was the first time in a group that people spoke to the death of one of their peers. And we said, well, what shall we do about Mr. Marcus? And someone said, let's have a memorial service. And someone else said, well, who's going to lead it? And someone else said, the rabbis, we'll get a rabbi in here. And somebody else said, don't be crazy. You know, we're not going to get a rabbi in here. The rabbis don't come here anymore. Thank God there are many rabbis now and many, many Jewish renewal rabbis mm -hmm. and many, many Jewish renewal mag mag Gidim. magidim, you know, who are, you know, taking on the chaplaincy and going into nursing homes and, and other healthcare environments. But in those days, you know, occasionally there'd be a retired rabbi who would go in there. And so we, somebody said, well, we'll have to do the service ourselves. And we went in to do the service. 
and one man who had Alzheimer's chanted from memory the, the Eo Mole Raka meme, the merciful God in heaven really opened up her heart when she heard him pray the Eo Mole Raka meme. And, you know, and different people stood up and spoke. And, and we gave a message that was that, that when you go into a place and you leave and nobody acknowledges you were there, it's as if you were never there. And that says, that says a terrible thing about you. So from now on, we're going to do this. We finished the nursing, the, the, the memorial service. And a woman came up to my friend and partner, Bob, who was starting this first Live Oak project with me. And she said to him, Mister, Mister, you do this for women too? And he said, we do it for everyone. A week later, she passed away. And as Rev Shlomo said again and again and again, what do we know? Mm -hmm. So you see this wonderful open height over here from which I learned things that got into the spiritual Eldring thing, but he is a source. 